Welcome to the Boxing Gossip Channel. Please hit subscribe if you are new. So this is my final prediction for Anthony Joshua versus Joseph Parker. Feels like a long time coming this video. I first discussed who I thought would win in this fight back in 2014. Crazy. Uh, and at the time when I discussed it in 2014, I think I got a request to discuss it. Um, it was the most viewed video that I've ever done or I had ever done at the time on this channel. Um, clearly, two young heavyweight prospects, both at the time viewed as big knockout artists, uh, guys who were rapidly coming through the ranks, and um, you know, guys who had really captivated the spirit of their nation's boxing fans. And I think that's one thing that's for sure, is whoever loses this fight, and unfortunately, you know, we're either, unless we have a draw, someone is going to lose this fight. Whoever loses this fight, there will be um, you know, a great ripple effect in that person's country. You know, Joshua here in the UK, by far the country's biggest boxing star. Arguably the man who has cemented Matrub and Eddie Hearn's rise to prominence and taken them to the next level. Uh, a guy who has broken uh, box office records, ticket sale records, etc. Joseph Parker, um, possibly less of a, a global phenomenon than Joshua, um, but by far the biggest person in New Zealand boxing. And you know, whilst there may be one or two exceptions, I think it's fair to say uh, that at present Joseph Parker makes up the majority of New Zealand boxing. You know, there's many, many Parker fans who are not Josh, who are not boxing fans, who are not. You know, New Zealand boxing fans, they are just Joseph Parker fans. So somebody's going to go, somebody's always going to go, somebody's going to take a loss. And it is going to be of huge significance to that person's uh, nation's fan base, let's put it that way. Because there's vocal minorities amongst both fan groups who simply do not believe their man is beatable. You, know, you have a section of Joshua fans over here in the UK who are ready to proclaim him as the greatest of all time and the next Muhammad Ali. You have a uh, what appears to be a crazed section of New Zealand fans um, believing that despite the fact that their man has ended many fights uh, by going the distance, they believe that he is one of the most thunderous punches out there and has a chin made of such iron that he cannot be knocked out. So there's going to be big questions. Uh, my take, for what it's worth, is that both of these guys are beatable. And I think hardcore boxing fans who've been watching this sport for years and who have seen you know, many heavyweights come and go will know that what I'm saying there is possibly true. Both of these men are beatable. You can look at both of these guys and you can see how a fighter could get them beat. Joseph Parker, he has had three fights off the top of my head that have gone to points that there has been debate over who won the fight. Now, whether you agree with that or not, whether you think that those fights were controversial or not, what a fair fan can acknowledge is there are three fighters who have taken multiple rounds off Joseph Parker and made fights competitive. Let's put it that way. Anthony Joshua, he's never gone the distance. But um, his stamina has failed and his gas tank has emptied on two occasions after being caught in the Dillian White fight and in the Vladimir Klitschko fight. And on both occasions, he's looked like a sitting duck. And he's been very, very lucky to survive. And you would have to say that on the balance of probability, if Joseph Parker could get Anthony Joshua in the position that he was in against Vladimir Klitschko or in the position he was in against Dillian White, you would pick Joseph Parker um, you know, to close the show. Let's put it that way. So, so my take is both of these guys are beatable. My take is that both of these guys will be beat at some point in their career. And for me, whilst I'm going to make a prediction and a final pick in this video, let me tell you that whoever wins, I won't be sitting here thinking, wow, that was an impossible result, you know, or I won't be sitting here saying, wow, we've had a, a Buster Douglas beating Mike Tyson moment. Absolutely not. You know, these are two elite heavyweights. These are two guys um, coming into the fight supposedly in their prime and uh, they're fighting opponents who both have you know, real holes in their game and who both can very much be beaten. It's a great fight, it's a competitive fight 
Uh, but I will not be surprised whatever the result is here. Uh, I think Joshua starts as a massive favourite. I mean, the bookmakers odds will tell you that. Um, but I wouldn't be amazed whatsoever if Parker won. And for me, it would be no Buster Douglas if Parker beat Joshua. Because, uh, you know, Joshua can be beaten. And Joseph Parker uh, has some real tools in his armoury for how to get it done. Um, regular viewers will know that I've uploaded two substantial keys to victory videos in the last week. Discussing the tactics that I would adopt if I was on Team Parker. The tactics that I would adopt if I was on Team Joshua. For how I think the guys should approach the fight. But, you know, in brief, with Parker, uh, I want to see him change distances. I want to see him hustle Joshua, make him work. I want to see him work Joshua's body. I want to see him come in and come out. I want to see his defences improve. Uh, yeah, there's very much a tactic there that Joseph Parker can employ uh, to really maximise his chances of success. Um, but one factor that we haven't discussed in this video, and I do think it's a key factor, is, is weight. Uh, and both of these guys have given rumblings at various times that they're looking to come into this fight lighter than we've seen them in previous fights. Uh, now, because of that, we will probably be doing a video um, after the weigh-in this Friday to discuss what goes down at the weigh-in. But I think that is a relevant factor. Um, you know, Parker, for me, he his performances have declined as he started to get heavier, as have Joshua's, actually. You know, Joshua's last performance against Takam for me, it was more Frank Bruno-esque. It was more plodding. Uh, there was less explosion. There was less speed. There was less athleticism. The same with Parker. Uh, I've noticed uh, a less less athleticism, less flow, less snap to his work as he's put on weight. For this fight, Parker's come in light. Or well, certainly, if you look at him in the build-up to this fight, he looks visibly lighter. Even his face looks a lot slimmer. Uh, Joshua, I've seen conflicting bits of evidence. Uh, you know, I've seen certain photos and clips where he looks slimmer, um, certain photos and clips where he's looked every bit as heavy set. So I think that weigh-in will be very revealing, uh, and I'm looking forward to seeing how it goes. Uh, and I think that's one of the key ingredients to the pre-fight build-up, um, because I think for Parker, if he were to come in light and Joshua were to come in heavier, for me that would increase Parker's chances of winning this fight slightly, um, because I think Parker's big advantages will come if he fights a fast mobile fight where he's rushing in and out of range um, and I think he's got a higher chance of doing that successfully if Joshua is heavy and slow and if he is light and fast it seems obvious uh, I'm hoping both guys come in a bit lighter actually because I think that will be what makes the best fight you know I think it'll be a real explosive fight between two super athletic super hard hitting heavyweights at that point um, let me address the surgery again you know uh, a lot of news this week about Joseph Parker having surgery on his elbow two surgeries in fact uh, and I did a video where I said, for me, this wasn't good news for Parker, like a lot of New Zealand fans were heralding. This was bad news, that he was having double surgery so close to a fight. And I speculated that I was unclear whether or not something like that could affect his training camp and whether he'd need time to rest, time where he's not doing things, etc. Yeah, the New Zealand um, team, Duco, have really taken this high pound of surgery to the next level. I've even been reading now uh, that they believe that Joseph Parker's um, weight gain is due to the elbow problems he's been suffering. I'm reading that uh, they believe the reason that Parker's care ratio has reduced so substantially in recent fights is because of the elbow problem he's been suffering. Um, I would say, I, I'm not an elbow surgeon, but I would tell you, I think a far more plausible reason why Joseph Parker's KO ratio has reduced, uh, which is something you see in many boxes, by the way, is they start with a low level of opposition, knock out the first 10 people they face with relative ease, and then as the levels of opposition start to increase, they get asked new questions, and suddenly the KOs dry up. People can deal with their power in different ways. People can you know, see their punches coming in different ways. But yeah, he hasn't been able to knock out Takam. He hasn't been able to knock out Ruiz, to knock out Huey Fury, to knock out Razvan Kajanu. Um, but Kajanu aside, these are a much higher grade of fighter um, than Joseph Parker's been fighting on the way up. So for me, it's no surprise at all that whilst his power was very, very effective at a certain level, it's maybe a bit less effective at that sort of top 10, top 15 level um, you know, that he's been up against. And those guys have not only taken his power, but also taken... Uh, multiple rounds of him on occasion. So, you know, I, I think Parker um, and his team 
around him are, are possibly guilty of slightly overhyping this uh, elbow injury. And I suspect uh, that when we see Parker in the ring, the main change in Parker that I'm looking for is the weight. You know, if Parker comes in 10, 15 pounds lighter, I, I think visibly that could make him a, a faster, more elusive, more dangerous threat to Joshua. So that's what I'll be looking for. Anyway, I've rambled for 10 minutes. We still haven't got to the prediction. So I better turn this video in that kind of direction. Um, my pick to win this fight is Anthony Joshua. Um, and I don't consider myself an AJ fanboy. You know, I've picked against Joshua in the past. I've been quite open in this video that I see him as a beatable fighter with holes in his game who can get beat um, by Parker. You know, it wouldn't even surprise me if Parker did beat him. Uh, but I think Joshua is a very, very dangerous fighter. Uh, I view Joshua and Wilder as incredibly dangerous fighters in terms of their explosiveness and in terms of the power that they hold. Parker, I must say, I do view as a slightly less immediately dangerous fighter. I think he's a very good fighter. I think he's got excellent speed. I think he's got above average power. Um, but I don't think this fight is as simple as Parker needs to clip Joshua and Joshua's out of there. Um, you know, Joshua may not have an iron jaw. We'll see in time. Um, but he's taken good punches in the past. He's taken punches from the likes of Vladimir Klitschko. You know, it should be noted that fans are quick to anoint Joseph Parker as having this iron chin. But he's never taken a punch and been able to carry on fighting from a guy like Vladimir Klitschko, unlike Joshua has. Um, but I view Joshua as a very, very dangerous opponent. And when he gets into that Joshua mode where he's able to get in that three quarter length range, which he so likes to do, and, and steamroll opponents, just look at what he did to Vladimir Klitschko throughout spells of their fight. When he does that, he probably is um, the most dangerous fighter in the world. Um, now, don't get me wrong, there's gaps there. If you're able to take him out of his stride and make him fight in a different way, he's certainly not the most dangerous fighter in the world. Um, but if he's allowed to impose himself like that and get his work off, he is a uniquely dangerous fighter in the context of today's heavyweight division. And frankly, and this may upset people, but it is my opinion, frankly, I think Joseph Parker does too much wrong in order to avoid that in this fight. Um, when I started making videos on Parker, I talked about this you know, next level prospect who I thought could go on to be a world champion. I thought he was that good. Um, but I did note, even back three, four, maybe even five years ago, that there were real holes in the Parker game technically. And unfortunately, as he's gone through the levels and as he's stepped up to world level, I don't actually think he's ironed out those flaws and holes in his game. And I think they still very much exist today. I think he's got by based on the fact that he's yet to face an opponent from the elite level, you know, he's yet to face a Klitschko or a Fury or a Wilder or a Joshua or a Povetkin. Uh, so this will be his first test at the elite level. Um, and I think those holes have shown themselves in a variety of his fights against top 15 opponents where he's been drawn very close. Uh, so the holes I'm specifically referring to are uh, defensive frailties on the whole. Um, you know, I, I talk about this constantly, but it's basic things. It's keeping your hands down by the waist when they need to be covering up your chin. It's keeping your chin up in the air when it needs to be tucked down. It's standing there, trading punches with your head just left out to dry. Defensively, Parker's an open fighter. Parker is someone who has routinely taken punches in his professional career. He is someone who has left himself open time and time again, maybe relying too much on the chin that his team are so confident in. Um, now, I am not a believer in this theory that Samoans can't be knocked out and that because Parker's got that sort of heritage, his chin is going to be next level. You know, Parker has got so an adequate chin so far, but taking a punch from a Huey Fury or a Carlos Takam or an Andy Ruiz is not the same as taking a punch from a guy like Anthony Joshua. And I believe every man can be knocked out. Uh, and I believe the combination of Parker's defensive frailties and the Joshua power is a real concern. Joshua has defensive frailties himself, by the way. But I do believe um, that looking at the two, 
Joshua is probably the more likely fighter to be able to time you with, and get you with one punch and stop you off one punch uh, than Parker is. You know, that, that's my take at this level. I appreciate Parker's ice people in the past, but not at this level. Uh, so, on the balance of probabilities, I'm picking Joshua to win the fight because I think it's an uphill struggle for a fighter with as many holes as Joseph Parker to not get one of those holes exposed by a guy as dangerous as Joshua. Uh, and I do think Parker will get knocked out in this fight. You know, I've got no belief whatsoever in this iron chin. I believe any man could be knocked out. And I believe if he starts eating those punches from Joshua, he'll end up the same way as every one of Joshua's other opponents has done. Um, what Parker hasn't shown is elusiveness, slickness, um, and I have concerns about how he'll need to fight in this battle. I think he will need to rus into range on Joshua. I don't think he can stand at the end of Joshua's punches. I think he'll need to rush in to close down the gap. And when he does that, uh, I think he will get caught coming in. Uh, I think he will need to put combinations of punches together. And he will need to get close to Joshua uh, to put a barrage of punches in. And I think when he does that, he's going to get timed and countered. Just looking at his previous fights. What's up for that Joshua, Joshua uppercut? I predict that will be a punch of relevance in this fight. Um, and I, I, I do believe, unfortunately, um, that Parker's going to have to take a lot of risks here, being the smaller man, being the away fighter. Uh, he can't let this go to points. He's got to come out and try and stop AJ. And I believe in taking those risks with his frailties that haven't been ironed out so far, uh, the balance of probability is that Joshua will time him, will counter him, will find the right punch, and will learn punches that change the course of the fight. That's my prediction. Um, Parker's not without a chance in this fight. I give him a solid 20%. You know, it's not beyond the realms of possibility whatsoever that he can win. He probably uh, has enough power to keep Joshua honest. Maybe he has enough power to, to really hurt Joshua. I believe he will certainly have enough power to hurt Joshua if he can start landing to the body or if he can start landing with regularity. I do question whether he's got the one-punch knockout power um, of Joshua, but I think range is going to be key here. Uh, you know, if you see Parker standing off Joshua, allowing Joshua to get that long-range work off, you know, that sort of straight punches where he's so dynamic, uh, if you see him struggling to get in, uh, if you see him stood up against the ropes, uh, I think he's in a world of trouble. And all in all, whilst this is a fight that could play out in many, many different ways, my consistent feeling is that Parker will have to gamble, Parker will have to rush in, Parker will have to exchange. And when he does, I think his, his openness uh, will really be exploited. Yeah, AJ is a big puncher, but he's an underrated timer of punching. He's an underrated. He's got an underrated arsenal of punches. He's got underrated uh, counter punching skills. Yeah, so I think Joshua is going to win the fight and win the fight by knockout. From a Parker perspective, and I did stress this at some length uh, in the keys to victory video I did. I think the stamina issues that we believe Joshua have are absolutely key to his success in this fight. If I was Parker, as I say, I wouldn't be looking to engage early. I wouldn't be worried about losing the first few rounds. I'd be wanting to control the range of the fight. I'd either want to be out of his range or I'd want to be in so he can't get that sort of preferred work off. I'd want to be working the body um, and I'd want to be backing myself to slowly empty that gas tank, make the big man work, make the big man punch himself out, <coughs> bank shots to his body early, um, to you know, increase the fatiguing process, if you like. Um, and back yourself that if you can get him in that position he was in against against Vladimir Klitschko, where he appeared to run out of steam, back yourself that you can end the fight if you put him in that position. Um, yeah. Uh, as I say, it, that's Joshua's biggest frailty to me. Um, and that's something that Parker could be in a position to do, given that he 
has got multiple experience of 12 round title fights which Joshua doesn't have and given that Parker appears to be someone who can fight at a decent pace with decent output for 12 rounds and hopefully will be coming in in career best condition um, that's my take guys you know I appreciate not always going to be a popular video because uh, we get a lot of viewers from New Zealand on this channel we get a lot of Joseph Parker fans on this channel um, but I'm picking Joshua to win um, let's hope it's a good fight that's one thing we can all agree on you know these are two young undefeated champions they're both explosive fighters let's hope they both turn up in great shape and it transpires to be a truly excellent fight um, please subscribe if you haven't done so already I will be covering the weigh-in obviously a post-fight reaction uh, and any other big breaking news that happens in the lead up to the fight this week so please subscribe if you're new other than that, use all requests. Please hit the thumbs up button to support this video. Please leave your comments in the section below and let me know your thoughts. As always, many thanks for tuning in to my channel.